So really, as a matter of fact, and you might be a little uh, surprised by this, and that's okay for the beginning, um, the internet all comes down to a wire. Uh, everything that you and I use on a daily basis um, to, to watch videos and to do online shopping and to ask our, our questions um, really all comes from a wire. Um, and this wire is right below us. It's kind of deep under the ground. Um, and, it, and it is, a matter of fact, this is the Internet. Now, let's build on this. Um, now, you'll see that I added these two images uh, connected to the Internet. And these um, are, are, uh, are types of computers that we're going to call a server. Um, and servers are, are connected directly to the Internet. You'll see that there's a direct attachment from each of these servers to the Internet, which is what I'm referring to as the wire here. Um, now, um, these servers are not regular computers that you and I use or the laptop that I have right in front of me now, uh, but, rea but rather these, these computers are listening and responding to messages that could communicate with each other across the Internet. Um, so, for example, web pages and files and even emails, uh, these are things that travel through the Internet from server to server. Uh, and that's why they have direct access to the Internet. But I guess the real question is, how does a computer like mine or an iPhone like yours uh, or an Apple Watch like yours, how, how do these devices connect? Because these are not servers, even though these are types of computers, they aren't servers themselves. Now, um, here are just a few other uh, types of servers. You'll notice that they each have this kind of long number below each one. And this is how we define a server. Each server has their own distinct number. Um, but as you can imagine, and I'm, I'm assuming you're thinking of this, is how would you, how would you remember uh, all these servers, considering um, you know, there's definitely hundreds, maybe even thousands of servers out there, each having a different, um, what we call an IP address or a very long uh, string of digits. Uh, and that's why back in the day, they made it nice and easy for us and decided to rename these servers something like securitycatalyst.com or google.com or facebook.com or krispykreme.com, uh, et cetera giving each of these servers uh, a more specific and easy to remember uh, what we'll call a web address, which we'll also define in just a little bit, um, giving you the ability to access these servers without having to memorize these long digits. Um, now, if we return back to our image, um, I've now given these two servers that we had originally some names. So this server up here, we're gonna call AOL.com, which is an email provider. I'm sure many of you tuning in today um, have heard of the term and have used an email address of AOL.com. Uh, and then a more modern one, which is uh, given to us through, uh, through Google uh, is gmail.com. So you might have an email like jordan at gmail.com or something of the like. Um, and then I've also added this additional image here, uh, which I'm calling a client. Now that client is like me or you, right? That is the laptop. That is the, the phone. That is, that is the device that you and I are very familiar with that we will use. And you'll notice that this device is in no way attached to the internet the same way that the servers are directly attached, which comes along to our question, how does a device like my laptop or your computer connect to the internet? Uh, and actually it does something uh, using what we call an ISP uh, or an internet service provider. Uh, now, even if you haven't heard of that term before, uh, you will when I tell you that in examples of ISP are Verizon Fios, Spectrum, AT&T, T-Mobile, any of these other uh, kind of like Wi-Fi connections, which are basically middleman. They basically allow us um, to connect from our laptop or from our device directly to the internet itself, uh, which is amazing uh, because um, as opposed to just kind of sitting on its own and not having any connection to the internet, an ISP or an internet service provider gives us access to connect both to it and the internet service provider does in fact, similar to a router, have direct access to the internet. So it's important to note um, that the ISP is how we connect to the internet. So I guess let's let's give a bit a bit of an example. Um, let's say I wanted to browse AOL.com, right? I, I wanted to go onto my computer and I wanted to explore the website that you and I are very familiar with of AOL.com. Or how would I go about doing that? And I outlined it here in orange, so it's very clear and visible. Uh, is on my computer, I'll go, I'll put in AOL.com, but I can't go there directly. I have to go straight through the ISP, the internet service provider. Uh, and once I go through that, now I'm in the internet, right? Now I'm in the wire that we refer to as the internet. And now I can go wherever I want. I can go to Gmail. I can go to any of the other servers, Krispy Kreme, Security Catalyst. But in this case, I'm going to go straight up to AOL.com, giving me the access that I am, in fact, looking for, which is uh, AOL.com. Now, uh, let's give another example to really bring this down to practicality. Uh, if I had a second computer, let's say this is my friend, 
uh, and this is me. So I'm client one and my friend is client two. I gave some numbers here uh, and I want to send an email to client two, right? That, that That's the goal here. I want to send an email uh, that will be received by client two. So let's kind of track through and see how we get the email from here up to here. Um, so let's say for the, for the purpose of the example, I have a Gmail account. So my email is jordan at gmail.com. Uh, and then my friend here has, a, has an AOL uh, account. Uh, so his email hypothetically would be client2 at AOL.com. Uh, so I guess step one is I have to send the email. I have to initiate it because I'm the sender, right? So that happens first. Um, so the first step, which is similar to what we just explored with AOL, uh, is I want to go through my internet service provider right down over here, and I want to get to Gmail, right? Once I've gone into the internet, now I can go wherever I want. In this case, I have a Gmail account, so I want to go to the gmail.com server. Uh, and now that I've entered that server, now what I now what I do is what you are very familiar with. You put in the send, uh, you put in the subject matter, you put in the body of the message, and finally you click on send. You click on send to that message, uh, and now the email uh, you'll see on your screen when you do it, your email has uh, you know been officially sent to client two at aol.com. Uh, now, how do we get the email from here? Right, it's still here, even though I clicked on send. Uh, let's see what happens now. The email is sitting in the gmail.com server. How do I get it to client two? Uh, well, what you'll see now is the servers can communicate with each other through the internet. Um, so what the email will do is it will go straight up to the internet and it will follow the orange line entering aol.com. And this is step two of three. We're almost there. Uh, the last step and the final step uh, is bringing the email from aol.com to client two, which is the recipient. That's the person that we want to view the email. Uh, and you might be guessing kind of how, to, how are we going to get the email from here to here if the client two can't connect to the internet. And that is in fact similar to what we did here uh, with client one. Client two uses an internet service provider or Wi-Fi, whether that be Spectrum, Verizon Fios, T-Mobile, AT&T, et cetera, uh, well, whatever their connection may be, uses the internet service provider to view the internet, so it, to, to view the email. So it goes from AOL server uh, into the internet service provider and finally to client two. So just kind of, to, kind of to recap here, we started at client one, we wanted to send an email. So we went through the internet service provider, we went into the internet, we went to the Gmail server. Once we were in the Gmail server, we composed our message, we clicked on send. Once the email was sent, we went into the internet and we went straight to the AOL server, which is the recipient's uh, server. And then once, once there, and the final step to get to the client is to use the internet service provider that you and I used originally to get to the client uh, itself. Um, so that, very simplistically, uh, and a just really broad overview, is what happens underneath um, kind of the, the, ov the overall idea of the internet that we know of, uh, how it really all traces back down to just a simple wire. And it's not really a cloud or an outlet or any of these kind of abstract concepts that maybe you and I have heard of or have heard people speak about, uh, whether on television or in the news, uh, but rather it all comes down to just this wire and using servers to communicate with each other and using ISPs or internet service providers in order to connect our personal devices to the internet itself.